Hello once again, everybody, and welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures with your host, High Lord Tamberlane. Today, we're going to be looking at a banged up box of Cador. Not Cador, because those are the guys in War Machine. Nope, Cador, a bunch of religious zealots from the 40k universe in Necromunda that have decided that they are going to worship. Well, it looks like the Custodus with those funky guns there, doesn't it? Anyway. I wanted them because they are quite the rabble-tastic looking models. Um, they are just wearing rags and trash and their weapons are not much better looking, are they? So, with that said, why don't we take a look at the parts because that's what we're all here to see, right? Not just the box art because we can look at that online. Alright, so give me a sec. Alright, so here is the sprue that is included along with the instructions and the usual bag of Necromunda specific bases. Now one thing I do want to point out because I built a couple of the Necromunda gangs, what you see is exactly what you get. These guys do not leave a lot of room for any kind of actual, you know, customization or modification. Basically, these two share the same body and there's a separate set of arms and heads for them and then the tops and bottoms all match up. And honestly and truly, I had a lot of difficulty trying to screw around with fitting the wrong arms on other bodies. They just did not want to work, which is kind of irritating because there's only the one guy with a rifle here, whereas you have a couple guys with, oh, I'm sorry, this guy might have a rifle, but mm, didn't do a whole lot for me. Anyway, so, you do have at least a couple of options with the heads, and the bodies themselves are pretty nice and sturdy. They're nowhere near as flimsy and as delicate as like the Vansar stuff. And they do at least have a quite a variety of different handguns, but the problem is where the hands actually connect. If you don't mind clipping things off yourself and doing a bit of work, I mean, yeah, then in that case, they're good to go. But if you just want to glue them together like right out of the box, but at least have a little bit of room for customization, you're going to be a little bit disappointed. There's not a whole lot you can do with them. Especially, you know, once the only real customizable aspect of these guys, I think, is really the heads. Outside of that, because the arms all seem to want to match up with specific weapons. And so we've got like, you know, the Custodus wannabe... Oh, what are those things? The Guardian Spears or whatever they're called with the blades with the guns built in. That's kind of what they got going on here. I'm curious what the rules are like for these guys. I haven't actually looked at them in Necromundi and I was waiting for the big, um, what is it? The, the new Gang War Collected Edition, but that's beside the point. These guys are going to be ending up in some kind of post-apocalyptic rabble. So, I built a few of them up just to get an idea of how they go together. And if you've seen any of my videos, you'll know that I rarely, if ever, bother to glue anything to the base prior to painting. So here's one of the close combat guys. I have no idea which face that is. But you can see I kind of accidentally bent the noose there around his neck. I do like the fact that his ball and chain is actually good enough to help support him standing up. That's always a plus. Uh, barrels are obviously going to need to be drilled out if that's your kind of thing. Sort of kind of fits on the base. And here's one of the guys with their wannabe custodian spears with dads and glue hanging off him. So, I mean, in terms of detailing, these guys are great. There's just all kinds of stuff going on there. Obviously, I need to clean them up, but that's beside the point. <laughs> that's really bad. Yeah, I know. I can see all the sprue cuts. So if you're into painting all those little details like that, you're going to have a lot of fun with those. I have no idea how I'm going to drill out those barrels, but eh, you live and you learn, right? Looks like he's got some goggles on despite all the crud all over his face there. Does he want to stay there? Yes, he does. So I did build the one guy with the rifle. He's carrying it kind of strangely. As you can see, he's got it kind of underhand there. But, you know, whatever. I do like the leg brace on him. It's a nice little touch. Yeah, sadly, these guys don't have any kind of little doodads to hang off of their belts like, you know, the Vansar or at least the Delac or the ones I'm familiar with. The only guy that actually does have anything hanging off him is their leader, and their leader is a really nice looking guy, but again, 
most of his parts, you know, they take up a ton of sprue space, especially his big old halberd thingy. And it doesn't leave a whole lot of room for customizable bits. Now, I've probably got enough laying around that I can add some pizzazz to them. And, I mean, honestly, they look like if you give them some orc gear, they'll probably fit in nicely. Set him to the side. And then because me being me, I've got to go with my close combat guys. He's got his little buzzsaw thing. He also has a mechanical leg, which I found a nice touch. I didn't think these guys would be able to afford bionics down in the underhive. I would have assumed that... I mean, it had a peg leg or something like a pirate, but, you know. So, again, you can see the leader there has got a good amount of size on him. This guy's just not going to stand yet anyway. And how do they look compared to the rest of the GW stuff? So, you can see, I mean, they fit in pretty nicely. Um, as I had said earlier, my hope is to use them as post-apocalyptic rabble, which probably they'll do a good job of. But... Again, I'm a little bit bummed out that there weren't a lot of extra parts. At least I know with my Dalak, there's all kinds of guns that even though I didn't end up using them yet, and hopefully I'll finish getting them painted so I can stick them back on here, there's still a lot of room for making my own models. Again, with these guys, I mean, yeah, I guess I could, but this is one of maybe two or three total weapons, or close combat weapons that are actually on the sprue. So... You don't have a whole lot of options in the box. So like I said, there's there's the buzzsaw. There's a broken bone, or maybe it's a dagger. I'm not sure. And if you guys see anything, I'm not. That honestly looks like... Oh, and the morning star. Oh, and here's a, here's a dagger or a shard of glass or something. So you got four options. Um, For somebody like me who really likes the close combat stuff... It's a bit disappointing, but like I said, maybe I'll grab out some orc bits. That might work out okay. So aesthetically and from a design perspective, these guys look fantastic. I really like how they look. They're going to be a lot of fun to paint, all the little bits of details on their uniforms. But again, what you see is that's all you get. There's no extra bits of customization. So if that's a factor to you and if you are turned off by that idea, you might want to look elsewhere. You could always go back and get the old medals. But for scabby looking trashy guys, you know, scraping the bottom of the barrel of the underhive, I, I think they really hit all the right notes in terms of looks. And if you want crazed religious zealots running around in an apocalypse, I think they'd fit that bill as well. The only thing is, you know, you're going to be kind of limited with the weapons in the box unless you go digging into your own bits. I'm probably going to do that for the second batch since I've built the first sprue, but we'll see how things go. So hopefully you found this at least a little bit inf of informative, if that's a sentence, I'm not sure. With that, though, I am going to leave you as I try to get these guys finished up and started painting. So with that said, this has been High Lord Tamberlane and his Obscurities and Miniatures saying bye-bye.